uh, this is again problem sheet one problem sheet one it's the problem number four problem number four and is the question number 10 shows such a structure with a point a yeah let's say this is half a frame those lines that you see they're actually uniformly distributed load that we have discussed in the course yeah so uniformly distributed load the same thing happens here as well Mm -hmm. the values of these three kilonewtons per meter and the value of this two kilonewton per meter as you can see because they are uniformly distributed load they have uh, a measurement so it's per meter so i have to know what is this distance which is about four meter and what is this length which is about one and a half meter now we discussed that as soon as you see and again the, the question is asking what should be, should the forces at a b for this whole thing to be stable and at rest so again those equations of uh, equilibrium should be satisfied the forces this time it didn't draw them so i will draw it myself let's say uh, r a y i'm just calling it you can call it whatever you want which is in this direction R A X and as you can see I'm just assuming a direction if it becomes negative then it means that I have uh, wrongly applied the direction it really doesn't matter and a moment let's call it M A or R M A so I have a reaction like this in Y direction a reaction like this in X direction and a moment as long as these can withstand these forces my structure will be at rest and then it will be stable and it won't move mm -hmm. now we discuss whenever you have uniformly distributed load as you can see here and you you, ha you can see here we convert this to the resultant forces so I'm drawing it again over here I have R A Y, I have R A X, and I have a moment R M A. Yeah? What is the resultant of these guys? We said the resultant will be the area of that load. So the area of this rectangle is 2 kilonewton per meter. So 2 kilonewton per meter times the length that it has been applied 1.5 meter which will be how much will be three kilonewtons as you can see this meter will this meter will disappear so it will be three kilonewtons where will it be applied it will be at the centroid of that um, mass of loading it's a rectangle so the center will be in its middle so a resultant force of three kilonewtons in the middle of this one and a half meter which will be 0.75 meter 0.75 meter let's look at this again so this I'm saying this is a resultant so let's do it like this before you get confused this kilon 3 kilonewtons I said again we multiply that uniformly distributed load which is this times the length that it has been applied this time is applied at 4 meters as you can see I'm discussing this and the distance of 4 meters 3 times 4 12 kilonewtons so this M and this M will be gone. Where does that resultant force of uniformly distributed load is applied? In the middle of the rectangle. So let's say it's applied here. It's 12 kilonewtons. And what are the distances? From here to here is 2 meters. From here to here is 2 meters. As you can see, I have kind of simplified a very complex system of distributed load. This can be an elephant sleeping. This can be the actual wind applied to the entire wall of the frame.
and I just replace them with a resultant force. These are the resultant forces, resultant of uniformly distributed load force. Whenever you see a distributed force, you have to convert it to a resultant force. Now, it's just a matter of simply solving the equations of equi uh, equilibrium in order to figure out what is that value. So let's say summation of all forces in x direction equals to zero. I'm assuming this direction as positive. What are the forces in that direction? It's just Rax and 12. Rax is positive. 12 is positive because they follow this direction equals to zero. What, is, what, does, what does this mean? Rax is equal to negative 12, whatever the unit is, which is kilonewtons. What does that negativity mean? This negative means assumed direction is wrong. So this direction that I originally assumed is actually from the other side to the other side. So it's like this instead of this. But as long as I know and I keep this direction and I have mentioned that uh, beep 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 this is wrong direction is totally fine you don't need to do anything so let's go to the next one summation of all forces in y direction equals to zero and going from bottom to top is positive looking at these i have only this and this so r a y is positive minus 3 because it's coming from top to bottom while my positivity is bottom to top so minus 3 equals to 0 what does this mean it means ray is equal to 3 kilonewtons as you can see this time it's positive direction so this direction that i have considered is actually true is correct as well and i have calculated the value as well the only thing left is the moment. Let's write that as well. So summation of all moments along a point. We said we take it along a point which has majority of unknowns, although we have already calculated. But anyhow, in original form, A is the place that it has most of the unknowns because all of the other places, they have the, the forces known. So let's say along point M, uh, along point A is, is zero. And I'm considering a clockwise direction as positive what happens now let's go with these we said all the forces times distance so m was force times distance yeah so all of the forces that i have which have a perpendicular distance to that point will generate a moment at that point over here we have 12 and if you see if i go around point a I have generated a moment which is clockwise. You see, I follow the arrow and it's clockwise. So it's positive 12 times its distance, perpendicular distance from here to here is 2 meters. What about this? 3 kilonewtons going around point A. Again, it goes clockwise. So it's positive 3 times its distance, perpendicular distance. From here to here, perpendicular distance is 0.75 meters. This bit gets a bit tricky. This is the first time that you see that we have a moment as well. When we have a moment, similar to these guys, that whenever we had summation of forces, we were bringing that force in as well. For example, Rax is here, Ray is here because it's summation of forces, and we were ignoring this moment. But this time, because we are summing all of the moments, I will bring this moment as well. And I will consider the direction that I have assumed. The direction of the force that I have assumed is like this. So it's clockwise and it's happy with my direction. So it will be plus R M A. Is there anything else? No, equals to zero. And if I simply calculate these, R M A will be calculated and satisfied. 
The point is, if you calculate these, it will give you a value, for example, 24 plus whatever. If you bring it to the other side, it will be a negative value. Yeah, so let's say negative something. Negative, let's say x. What does that negativity mean? This negative sign means that the assumed direction is wrong. So instead of a moment like this, it's actually a moment like this. So my original uh, assumption was wrong, but really doesn't matter. As long as I have calculated the negative sign and I have realized that it's the wrong direction, it's totally fine. So you don't ne even need to draw this to confuse you. Just keep it as negative and just mention it to the reader that made that negativity is the wrong way okay now we discussed a little bit about stability instability and uh, directions and stuff like that let's look at some more cases do you remember this case which was the skateboard and we were saying this has these two reactions because they are the roller and I have only one member and for each member I can write three equations of motion so 3n is equal to 3 how many reactions do I have is only two and because reactions are less than 3n it's unstable similar to a skateboard if I put my foot on here it would right away now I have a case which is like this so now I have four reactions the same member everything is there now my number of reactions is more than 3n does that make this case a stable case we said no there is another criteria as well if the reactions are all parallel then it's unstable as well and a good example is like add few more wheels to your skateboard it will even go faster it doesn't make it stable anymore so it's still unstable now let's look at a bit sophisticated case so i have a member like this with a hinge like a pin is connected to another member like this and then it's connected to a beam like this this bit is under a roller or a rocker and this bit is under a pin so this is a pin and this is a roller we said immediately as you see a roller just put the reaction it will react and it will prevent this point to go up and down the same thing with the pin as well it will prevent from this point to going up and down also it will prevent this from going left and right as you can see I just put the direction randomly this direction you can put it the other way it doesn't matter remember these these hinges let's call it hinge acts like a pin as well so it doesn't allow this bit to go up and down it doesn't allow this bit to go left and right but it allows some moment to go around it so whenever you saw this sign that two elements are connected to each other and there is kind of a dot in the middle that is a hinge like the door hinge it doesn't let your door to go up and down or left or right but it allows it to rotate now what about this case how many reactions do i have one two three four five six seven my reactions are seven how many three n do i have that's the tricky bit each of these members because they have a support at their end and they have been separated from another member each of them are a separate member so this is n1 this is n2 meaning member 2 and this is n3 meaning member 3 so actually my 3n is 3 times 3 because for each of these guys I can write three equations of equilibrium so 3 times 3 9 and what is the situation here R is smaller than 3n 
And whenever this was happening, the structure was unstable. And it makes sense. If I put a human being over here, like nothing resists this from moving away and the whole thing will become like a straight line. Because this will roll away, this will open and rotate, and this will open and rotate. Okay, this point won't move, but can push the whole thing to go up. So the structure is unstable. Let's look another case as well before we finish. So I now have a fixed end. I have uh, a hinge over here. I have another member going away and I have another fixed end over here. To make stuff a bit more sophisticated, I'll put a, let's say a tie here as well. And if you remember, ties were just in tension. Let's make it even more sophisticated. I'll put a roller here as well. So I have a fixed support, fixed support. Let's zoom in this. Mm -hmm. I have a fixed support, I have a roller, I have a hinge, let's say I have a tie and I have another fixed support. Again, as quickly as you saw a roller, put the reaction, which is like this, it prevents it from going up and down. When you saw a hinge, quickly put a reactions as well, it prevents it from going up and down and left and right, but because it's a hinge like a door, it goes and allows rotation. The tie will only have one reaction. Remember this. And it's like this. Yeah? It's tension, so toward wherever is fixed. The fixed supports, if you remember, it was no up and down, no left and right, and no rotation. So all of them were reactions and resistance. The same thing happens here as well. No up and down, no left and right, and no rotation. Now, let's count the reactions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten reactions. If I assume the same thing which happened here happens here as well. So I have a member here. So this is, let's say, N1 and this is N2. So I have two members for each of them i can write three equations of motion so three times two is equal to six now what has happened my reactions are bigger than my members when this was happening the structure was indeterminate and we were saying, because you have so many reactions, more than equations of motion that you can solve, we cannot solve it without the help of the computer. It's a little bit sophisticated and you will learn this later in the coming years. But it's an indeterminant. Each time that you say something is indeterminant, you have to tell us how much and what is the degree of its indeterminacy. So simply you just minus 10 from 6. So is fourth degree. Indeterminacy. Okay. Um, that's it for this tutorial. We are going to solve a little bit more of these thingies during our live session. So please make sure that you join the live session through Zoom, uh, through your UCL Zoom IDs as well. And uh, we'll see you then. Good luck and we'll see you later.